Do you think a uh, um, oh man, I had a brain fart. I totally had a question about that. Dude, I wanted to show you like this game cuz you play this game, right? Yeah, yeah. This game is surprisingly deep. Like uh the fact that like this is the the grind sort of balance, but if you go into the these pools with the balance, you don't fall like that's like a nice transition that then, in this game, they added the revert, which is that thing, which can chain more combos. Like, this game is surprisingly Re the revert? Deep, like, it's like a like recovery? thing. Oh, yeah. okay. Like, uh... Is that real life? You can do that? I guess, but not, like, not to the extent... That's like you do that to not die if you're going, like, down a half pipe. Because I would say the, the wheels don't turn that way, so that'd be like, you probably eat shit, right? Yeah, probably, but this game, like, I think... Three is probably my favorite, or two, but these, the number three and number two are like the the high watermark of the series before it got sort of to be too much. You know, like this game, uh, the second one had um, a thing, like I remember my friends wouldn't believe me because the second one had a stage that was called Skate Heaven that you could only access if you did 100% with every character in the career. Huh. And it sounds like such a made-up kid Skate thing heaven. to say like, hey guys, <laughs> I discovered this new stage that none of you have ever heard about. What's it called? Oh, Skate Heaven? Right, and right. It's like, right. Well, what, Skate Heaven, bro. What, what is it? Oh, it's, it just has a lot of like, just, it's like you're in heaven and God is talking to you about how good you're skating. They never <laughs> believed me. And no one could ever access that level because they weren't good enough to a hundred percent. So I was always resentful of everyone until afterwards, years later. It's like, hey, you know, like we were drinking with some friends and they were like, you know, Skate Heaven. I finally saw it and I was like, see, no one fucking believed me. Everyone thought it was my childish imagination and uh, wanting to be accepted by making up shit in high school. That was other things. That was like, oh, there's a... There's a, a beehive in, uh, underneath the classroom, you know. Right. Dude, I knew a guy who was like, he seemed like a cool guy, except he always, always telling stories like, man, this one time I got shot. Oh, like, <laughs> fuck. He's like, he was telling a story about how he went fishing, and like the fish was so big that like the boat was sitting on top of the fish. Like, stuff that's like, dude, we're, oh, we're all God. like 16. Like, oh, we all understand shit. that the I world was, like, is like... like eight year old tall tales, no, not that's, 16 that's, year old. That's why I double take. I'd look at him like... <laughs> Dude, like, we just came out of, like, AP <laughs> chemistry. Like, are you serious right now? But he was. He was. Like, oh, I, to be fair, he wasn't in my AP chemistry class. Now that I'm thinking about it. But, yeah, I was. it was just felt weird that another person my age was like, man, you know what? Like, I fucking know, like, most styles of kung fu. <laughs> I'm like, cool, dude. All of them. Like, yeah. Did you name it? I know it, bro. And then if you want him to show you, it's like, well, I can't right now because my sensei told dude. me to. <laughs> my dude. sensei. Dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I just remembered we, I remember um, I was involved with the church when I was in high school. And they did this function once in a, in a neighborhood that I was close to where it was kind of like a, you know, hey, everybody get together, grab people from the neighborhood, like people that don't go to the church, but you can still come by and have a hot dog, mm -hmm. like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember um, there was this kid named Vincent who was like he must have been about uh, 220 pounds a pretty big guy but he was like you know maybe five inches shorter than me you know he was five 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 six or whatever mm -hmm. and uh and he he i didn't really know the whole nerd gaming culture thing yeah and he looks at me and, he, and he's like hey babe what's up I'm like, hey what's going on dude and he's like hey uh, so do you game and I'm like, do I game? Yeah, I, I like Command and Conquer, and I, you know, Mario 64 and stuff. And he's like, no, do you like, you know, game? I'm like, no, oh, man. I don't, uh, mm. Yeah, I mean, sure. And he's like, here, follow me. And I'm like, okay, well, follow me. And I, you know, I was a tender age of like 14, 13, and he, he's probably a couple years on me. Mm -hmm. So I follow him to like a uh, this this parking area in the apartment complex, and there's a van. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is, sounds like it's about to take a sour turn. Thankfully, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, but he's like, he opens up the back of this van. It's like this white colored van. He pulls out a big foam sword. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking like, what the hell is that? And why would he pull, why would you have that in your car? He gives it to me and he goes, hit me. And I'm like, <laughs> hit you. I, I felt like I hadn't seen Fight Club, but it was kind of like that scene oh, with Tyler yeah, Durden without the cool. <laughs> Except fucking... it was Vincent, it's fucking fat Vincent, <laughs> being like, "You game? You game? You hit me!" And like, uh, "All right, dude." And so I kind of give him a tap because I'm really awkward at this, I, like really weirded out and awkward at this point. And he's like, "No, like really, like give me a good hit, man." And I'm like, and I'm in my head, like I'm, not, I've always been like, you know, not a not super scrawny. And I was like, I don't think you want me to do that. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think I'd probably. <laughs> like at least fracture something 
So I didn't. I was just I just humored him because I didn't want to be an asshole. And I was like, mm-hmm. ah, there you go. He's like, see, it's not, it doesn't hurt at all. I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> he that was like my first foray into like the type of guy who likes Dungeons and Dragons and like LARPing and shit like that. Oh. Later in that evening, we meet a guy who uh, who Vincent decided to pick over me in terms of who was going to be his new buddy that day because this guy wore a, a kimono like. <laughs> All all day long, he had this weird face that looked like he had like tape constantly a pulling up on the kimono all day long. Yeah, like those Japanese kimonos. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, he had bright red hair with a ponytail, oh, really bad yeah, acne. He was Kenshin. He was totally samurai X Roni <laughs> Kenshin guy, of course. Been, yeah, except I just didn't appreciate it. I just thought he was a <laughs> yeah. freak at the time. <laughs> and like he's like a his I don't even remember his name, but like he had that conversation to me that was like because I was I was studying uh, hapkido. Uh, which oh. is a really cool, like, I only did it for a couple of months, but I loved it. Um, and uh, we started, of course, we were, you know, like boys do. It's like, oh, I do taekwondo, I do karate. Yeah. I'm like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, you know. And he lists like 12 different ones. He's like, I do a little bit of that, a little bit of that, <laughs> and a little bit of me. And and uh, A little bit of his shit. Dude, I, I, me and my brother and sister, because they were around, we quote that to this day. A little bit we're of like, me. A little bit of that, and a little bit of me. <laughs> a little bit of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, good Lord, like, I, I don't know, like that. That guy had a lot of quotes that day. That guy, he was always uh, making up shit, and then when you would ask him to, you know. Yeah, and him and him and him and Vincent, it was like love at first sight, and they just <laughs> ran off without me and and did who God, you know. They yeah, must have you didn't belong together. in the uh, the. Club I was rejected, of, dude. I was fucking rejected yeah. from the LARPing crew. Yeah, it's like bad. LARPing and white lies and fibbing and like <laughs> just a sort of a ego sort of massaging via. Whoever you can find that believes uh, anything you say because they they desperately need a friend as well. Like, I would always have people... Like, dude, a lot of people in El Salvador, because there is so much chaos and violence, that, like, everyone was fucking weird in some way because everyone was uh, affected in some way from being, like, you know, broken home or uh, yeah. the fact that, um, I don't know, kids would die and not go to school anymore because they were... So it was like... Um, that's like the best sort of um, what is it uh, place to get inspiration for some of the shit I do. Where it's like just remembering all the weird guys that, were, especially considering me, like I'm a weird guy, dude. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm like I'm. We're we're playing or I'm playing this while you're talking, and I'm like getting all the goals, and I'm like uh huh uh huh, just like being like <laughs> autistic about this shit. Where it's like I haven't played this game in like five, like more like a decade, and I still remember so much shit. Like I was one of the weirdos. But there was always a specific flavor of like the guy that would lie, like at least be truthful about how weird you are, and I'll be your friend because or else that would like totally turn me off. I always felt like like guys like us who who would get so involved in video games were just kind of a little ahead of our time because now it, it feels almost like the mainstream is is uh, or especially on the internet like mm. being out and loud and proud about loving video games is now as a commodity it's like like people make careers around that now you know what i mean oh yeah versus like back then like i remember shunned. on one of your andy tell stories like yeah, yeah. you kind of you kind of kept it to yourself because like ugh, video games ugh. yeah you were shunned because you'd you'd get beat up because it's like what you don't like soccer you don't like this and that you like video games right right yeah nowadays also what i've noticed is um especially with movies or anything that comes out like they don't leave room for like they leave room for interpretation only in a way where like movies nowadays they want you to feel deep by uh, filling in the gap for things like oh sure dude i saw i tried watching finding dory all right i did watch it i okay. sat through the whole thing i, I don't know it. if you've seen it but no. i think it's, it speaks to exactly what you're talking about yeah where, like they they just hit you so like right on the nose exactly like the emotions that that they're trying to like spoon feed you uh-huh. like, man that stuff Ugh, that stuff's hard to sit through. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that a lot where it's like, God damn, let me have some imagination. Like, I feel kind of bad sometimes for, I don't know. I don't remember if there's... There, it, it, oh, here's another thing that really struck me. The, the, this is the moment actually from Collateral that really stuck out mm-hmm. to me the last time I saw it where there's a scene uh, about maybe halfway through the movie, maybe three-fourths in, where Jamie Foxx stops the car, the cab, and it's like 4 a.m. in the morning. There's no traffic, so the audience, so as an audience member, you're like, huh, that's weird. Why is everything stopping? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you see a coyote walk across the road, and you see another coyote walk across the road, and then it's kind of like a, a medium close on Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx, but mostly Tom Cruise. And all of a sudden, like, music kicks in, and the coyotes finally make their way out of the road, and then the movie just keeps going, and all of a sudden, there's like this new song playing. 
And that, I mean, I don't even know exactly what the film is trying to say, mm. but I, I always felt like, like that's obviously, obviously they're on purpose. Like there's a reason, there's some thought there behind that. Yeah. But they don't ever explain it necessarily. Now the way I see it is that like maybe like the two coyotes represent these two guys kind of lost in the middle of the night. Oh yeah. But at the same time too, that's sort of a predatory animal. Yeah. Which maybe is why they the camera was stuck more on Tom Cruise's reaction than Jamie Foxx's reaction. Oh, uh, yeah. And he is sort of like this guy who's out of his element, not from Los Angeles, but only there because he's there to do a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't know, but the beauty is is that like it it it, it provokes thought, but it doesn't like necessarily conk you on the head with like what you're supposed to think. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 